I want to ask you, um, what did you take away from that? I was completely impressed, as was said many times, by the number of people that that came out um, uh, at night and gave up their evening to find out about their civil rights and to hear from the panelists. Um, I, I think that it was very important because one of the callers spoke earlier, I was listening in the, on the radio on the way here, uh, about the ability to speak before our council meeting tomorrow morning. And many people do not have the luxury of being able to take off from work and come downtown and um, have their opinions and their voices heard before us in person. So the ability of, uh, of our being able to hear what the concerns were last night was, was valuable. Let's go to the Clean Zone Ordinance then. Mm -hmm. What do you anticipate happening tomorrow? Um, we, we outlined it at the beginning of what it would be, the, clean, the, the six or so square mile clean zone, the, um, and this is what's proposed, the 60 minute limit on, on uh, demonstrations applying for a permit, the $50 fine, which is less than, or not fine, uh, permit See. application, mm -hmm. which is less than what it typically would be. Yes. What parts, uh, and this is you speculating, but what parts of the proposal do you think will be kept and what parts do you think the city council will be skeptical about and might change? Well, we um, have all had the opportunity to meet with our legal staff uh, in the crafting of this ordinance. I believe the first copy that we received was um, in February. And I personally, I can't speak for the other six council members, but I personally met with uh, our city attorneys, plural, not just Mr. Schimberg, who was the speaker at last night's forum, um, about the provisions in the ordinance. And I can say that several of the suggestions that I've already made um, between February 27th, I believe it was, and as recently as a few hours ago, um, have been uh, taken and incorporated into the ordinance. So it's already, I think we're on the published versions, we're probably on our third or fourth rendition at this point. Um, so there, have, there has been the openness of our legal counsel to, to take our considerations and to heart and, and make those changes. I'd like to go to the phone so that we can have uh, people weigh in on, on their questions for you. So let me, let me do that and we'll go now to Zebulon in Tampa. Hi Zebulon, do you have a question for Council Member Monte Leon? Well, thanks for that comment. Uh, Councilmember Monte Leon, would you like to respond? Um, sure. And um, Zebulon, I'm a frequent li listener, so I, I think I've got a privilege of actually talking to you um, directly uh, in this format. But um, Clean Zone is, and these, remember, these are my interpretations of um, what has been, uh, what I've been briefed on from, from legal um, counsel. But the Clean Zone isn't a reference to the speech or the content of the speech. The clean zone refers, I think, more to, and again, my opinion, refers more to the things and items that you can and cannot have within the clean zone. So uh, I heard you talking about weapons earlier. Although the, the city cannot um, trump the state in uh, the regulation of, of registered firearms, uh, there are many other things that can and will be used as weapons during the convention. And the clean zone refers to, in my opinion, the things that you can take with you into the zone, not the manner or content of your speech. May I take exception with something you just said? Sir? You said there will be what the, the weapons that can or will be used. Mm -hmm. I think you said, it sounded to me mm -hmm. like you said 
that it was almost inevitable. Um, it, it, I, a lot of the people I've spoken with are really concerned that the city is acting as if violence or mayhem is inevitable when their feeling about it is that it's it's kind of unlikely unless it's uh, started by the police. And um, I think that that's based on my observations of previous RNCs and previous DNCs, I think that I agree with them that that it's un very unlikely that there will be violence or there will be mayhem from the protesters at the yeah, started by the protesters. There are probably for the most part the protesters will be peaceably assembled but there are, are always those in the crowd that are there only to create mayhem. And in previous RNCs, looking at the videotapes or YouTube or, or news reports, what happened you know, in, in St. Paul, um, Minneapolis-St. Paul, the, um, it's, it's, to me, it, would be, um, it wouldn't be in our citizens' best interest to assume that there's not going to be. Uh, in, in my world, I prepare for the worst and hope for the best and, and really want everything to come off without a hitch and, and it to be peaceful. But, I mean, I've been in back in the day to concerts where you're standing in line for tickets and things get out of control. Um, so when you have a crowd of people in a highly charged environment, um, words are, are said even amongst each other, even amongst protesters who disagree with one another as to the, their particular opinions. Um, you know, you get my hot-headed Italian family in one room and we, we, <laughs> we have... So I, I don't want to belabor this too much, but um, something you just said about in a highly charged environment, mm -hmm. do you think that the police and the city have the responsibility of damping down that highly charged environment? Do you think that by having police dressed up in body armor, that that contributes to the highly charged environment, whereas there could be an, uh, an example where you have the police coming out, at least in the front lines, without all of that, and it would just bring everything down, mellow out. Well, you know, I, I'm not a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist, and that's really getting into the, the psychology of, of a crowd mentality. Um, and not just in a crowd mentality, but into intimidation factors, into a lot of um, the the psyche of both the, the those that are there for protection of the public and those that are there for expression of their of their civil rights, whether it be on the left or the right. Um, so, you know, is is it? Um, just the fact that they're wearing uh, what they call turtle suits or riot gear, um, is that going to bring out the worst in people? I would hope that it doesn't. I would, I would hope that um, being prepared is not viewed as, uh, is it, as intimidating. I mean, really, you, you, ha you have to be prepared in these situations. If, if something terrible were to happen, are they going to go run back to this, their um, vehicles and get suited up and, and run back? By that time, who knows what, what could happen in that time frame. And it's going to be August, and it's going to be hot, and they don't want to be in those suits, trust me. Great, thanks. Let's go to the phones. Um, I want to go to Jason in Tampa. Hi, Jason. Very good, you? Mics are off. What? Oh, I just want to adjust your... Mic on.
thanks for that comment. J Jason, let's, I'm going to um, let uh, Councilmember Monteleon respond to that. Have you seen these videos where, um, where the, uh, there's, a, there's someone who's causing trouble in a crowd, in an, in an otherwise peaceful crowd? And I, I, hang, Jason, hang on. I'm asking the council member where, where you've seen someone causing trouble, and then all of a sudden they're whisked through the police lines, and then, you know, and then they're palling around with their police friends, these uh, Asian provocateurs. Uh, I saw that in videos in the 2004 RNC in, in St. Paul. Are you familiar with what, what Jason's talking about? Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not. But I can tell you that, I, and this was said by uh, Kirby Rainsberger, the legal counsel to TPD last night that in the city of Tampa, we have a different philosophy um, than some other departments. I mean, I, I spent several conversations um, since the inception um, of, of, of the RNC uh, regulations and with, with Chief Castor, and that's not typically how we operate. I mean, we, we have a different mindset here, and I think that um, the, the actions of, of TPD here um, uh, over the years that she has been chief, I, d I don't think you can point to a, a, a police department that is really looking to incite trouble. I, I think that we do have a different philosophy and, and those officers that are coming here to supplement um, our, our force are, are being, um, com that, that message is being communicated to them. All right, let's, we'll go back to the phones in just a second. I want to read an email from Norwood. Between the, this ordinance and the recent Supreme Court decision, it sounds like one might be strip searched after arrest for hanging a banner on one's residence within the zone. Now that is a First Amendment violation. Good stuff. And I should say that Nor Norwood, that um, I heard some talk last night that the banner provision in the clean zone ordinance is going, it might be stepped back a bit. That's kind of what I heard. Um, do you know any, have you heard anything about that? I believe the banner ordinance has been removed. Okay. So um, uh, the banner portion of the ordinance um, has been removed. So the restrictions say. on banners that council, that former council member Dingfelder was concerned about last week, it has been removed. Let's I go now to Danny in Tampa. Thanks for that call, Danny. I'm afraid you're going to be the last call. Um, I hope you're wrong about Kent State. Um, I'm a little nervous because there will be National Guard here. Um, we only have a few seconds left. Uh, Councilmember Monteleon, this went by too quickly. Uh, any last uh, words? I'm sorry I couldn't be here sooner. Um, but, you know, we, we all only want the best for our city. I mean, we don't want to be known after the RNC leaves that that we suppress people's rights and that our police force was um, was oppressive. That is not the image of the city of Tampa we want. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And uh, you're listening to WMNF Tampa. Stay tuned for Surface Noise with DJ Lounge Laura Taylor. That's after these news headlines from NPR. Our Maria has been our engineer. I'm Sean Canan. Join us again tomorrow. From NPR News in Washington. Okay.